Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum again. Um, I'm happy that we are together this morning to once again launch an action plan to counter various aspects of terrorism. You know that terrorism has been with us for a very long time in this country. On a small scale, I think from 1980 when the, the Norfolk Hotel was blown. But in Skyred Face, it is 20 years old. With the attack in August 20, uh, 19, 1998 of the American Embassy in Nairobi. For us, the pressures of terrorism, of terrorism have been with us for the last seven years on an intensive scale with the climax in 2015 when 148 innocent students were killed at the local university here. From that activity alone and from that incident, our people will have able to appreciate what terrorism is, what it can do to a community, the devastation it can cause, and the dangers it exposes to innocent people. Because those students who died were people who had done nothing other than just to come and land here. But still, even with that incident, our people have always been in dilemma. <coughs> Where do we stand in this war against terrorism? Is it our war? Is it an international war? Is it a local war? What is our relationship with those who are waging it? And Al Shabaab, who are the cause of the problems in this county and in this region, and who are domiciled in, in, uh, in Somalia, we have always given them an Islamic faith, an Islamic faith, that there is the possibility that they may be fighting for an Islamic cause. Al Shabaab have never at any one given time in the 11, 13 year history told us what they stand for. We are the ones who gave them that religious faith. We don't know what they fight for. If they were to get their way, if they were to get what they want, if they were to achieve in their objectives, we don't know what it is because they have never told us what they are fighting for. Fortunately, where we have reached now, as a county, as a religion, we have come down from a time when we believed that terrorism was an international problem, it was a regional problem, it was a Kenyan problem. Now we have reached a state where we believe that this is our problem. And we can no longer live our normal life with the presence of Al Shabaab amongst us or with operations amongst us. Today our social services are paralyzed in most parts of this county, specifically the three counties which border Somalia, that is the Dar, Fafi and Ijara. Our schools have no teachers. Our health centers are closed. Our roads are impassable. Our communities can no longer continue to do 
they have to live their normal life. And as a region, as a county, we have made a deliberate decision that we want to take Al Shabaab head on. Whatever is the involved, that is a major decision because Al Shabaab started as a terror organization terrorizing, uh, carrying out uh, terror activities in Nairobi and Mombasa and other urban centers <coughs> and Garissa. But now they have become an, a local insurgency, built among us, living among us, having our own people serving in its ranks, with cells and informers in our towns. Yet, we are their target, we are their problem, and they want to dismantle our way of life. We can no longer carry out development activities. With that decision, our communities, our people at all levels will be involved in the fight against Al-Shabaab whatever it takes. This document we are launching today will be our guide on the various activities we are going to undertake as a community, as a people, to counter terrorism in its diversity and Al Shabaab in particular. As we do this, and as we make this deliberate decision, I'm sure we are going to face very many challenges. But I would like to point out that that duty, that mandate, that responsibility which we are going to take to counter terrorism in its diversity and Al-Shabaab in particular is a mandate of the national government. Unfortunately, I foresee our biggest challenge in countering Al-Shabaab and its associates will be the relationship between our people and our security agencies. Our security agencies have been, have been socialized over time that there is no difference between us and those who are fighting them. It is somewhere deep in the head of our people in the security services. It's very unfortunate. There has been a tendency to collectively punish, to not distinguish between the terrorists and those who are being terrorized, we have that lack of trust. We had an incident two days ago in Ijara. And one of us was injured, a volunteer with the Kenya Red Cross. The officer who is supposed to contain that is the GSU officer based in Ijara. Unfortunately, what he did yesterday as a response to that was to call the local chief to organize a baraza for him with the local people. And the way the people assembled, he separated them into groups, isolated the youth, and they did what they know best. They beat up all the young people. Now, we want to take over that role of that policeman to counter Al-Shabaab ourselves. And that's the way this policeman is dealing with us by beating the youth who should have gone to the front line. How are we going to attain that objective of eliminating these people from amongst us? I think that is something. I'm happy. I'm happy that my friends who are representatives of the national government Chep Cheng and Mr. Miri are people whom we have worked with in the past. And they will tell you that there is nowhere 
in the training of either a policeman or a military man where they are told go and beat a people. It is not there. Although now I feel there might be need for any officer who is posted here to be given some orientation to learn from the past injustices and abuses so that they don't repeat or do what they think is the best thing to be done. Because even in Elba, there was an incident a month or two ago and the military went and they beat up a whole village because one person died in hospital later. This incident, this relationship between the security agencies and the public somehow has to be settled. There is no way we can move forward with the current relationship. And for us, it is most urgent that we eliminate this problem from amongst us because our social services are paralyzed. A whole generation of young people will be lost without going to school. Our people cannot be treated in our centers because there is no staff. Therefore, I would like to ask publicly, maybe we should have talked in private, that with my colleagues here, with my friends here, with the national government at various levels, we need to find a solution to that relationship so that we can contain this common problem in the society. Number two, we have our young people who have over time joined Al-Shabaab. I don't know their numbers, but we know they exist. We want the national government to want to help us through its own networks, because they have the resources, to tell us how many of our young people are in Al-Shabaab. And then it will be our responsibility to ensure that they come back. But we want them to come back and join their, set, their, their families safe. We want to have a national amnesty for these people to come and surrender, to forego whatever they are doing now. And then we want to have a joint reception committee, which includes local leaders, local chefs, local elders, so that when those young people are coming back, they know that they are coming back into the hands of people they know. Because I know their biggest fear will be if they come and surrender to the school agencies, they will be eliminated and they will be killed. And we don't want to bring back people for them to be killed. We want them to mend their ways, to be integrated into society, to be rehabilitated, so that they can become useful members of this society. The issue of KPR has been mentioned. I know very big numbers, 200 in, in the Jara constituency, 100 and something in Fafi, 100 and something in uh, the Dad. These people will remain useless if they are not trained, if they are not armed, if they are not organized. In fact, the way they operate now, I don't think they can become very effective against any armed group. Therefore, we not only need to ensure that the KPR is in place, but we want to structure them in such a way that they become effective in whatever they are supposed to do. I think we will work together with the national government and security agencies to ensure that the KPR works for us. As a county government, we have in the past participated in training for some of them. We will continue to allocate resources to train them. But we want them structured in such a way that they become an, ex, uh, an uh, effective fighting force against these able people. We launch this action plan with the understanding that it will be implemented. It will mean nothing if it remains in a leaflet or a booklet without implementation. But that implementation will require public support and it will require resources. I want to add 
our friends from the U.S. Embassy, from DAI, from other organizations, to please ensure that you commit resources, both financial and human and technical support, to ensure that this document which has been launched is implemented to its fullest. I know many things have been recommended in this. I want to urge the public that we should play our role in ensuring that this document is fully implemented. And the tour is that. I want to inform you that we shall organize a county conference where this document will be discussed. We will bring people from every sub-county with a major emphasis on the three sub-counties which are on the border and which have uh, borne the most effect of terrorism so that we can all discuss, understand and go to implement at the grassroots. Finally, I want to inform you that we have decided as a region to implement the community-based approach to fighting terrorism. And that will call for an inter-county collaboration to share experiences and our actions will be discussed in a conference we are going to hold it next month on the 6th between the um, Personalist Parliamentary Group and the Frontier Counties Development Council. We will discuss other things, but our stand on terrorism and specifically our regional stand and the collaboration between the counties will be something which will be on the agenda and then the resolution there will be brought to the public and we call for your support. So with those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to declare this action plan against the uh, um, countering violent extremism and the countering terrorism officially launched. Thank you very much. <laughs>